<laughs> All right, so um, I wrote, um, or I finished writing uh, something that David started, I don't know, years ago. Um, basically, uh, with alarms, they're you know, the events that are important, and um, wouldn't it be great to be able to ship all of them to some other system? Um, and so the first implementation that he wrote was syslog, um, which is great. And um, currently what we do for similar things, although we use NodeFD to do it, is, um, um, is use uh, ActiveMQ uh, because it's great for guaranteed delivery of things um, and relatively uh, low overhead. So I wrote a JMS Northbounder um, targeting ActiveMQ out of the box, um, although you can um, replace the JMS implementation at least theoretically. Um, so really, I mean, as far as like a demo goes, it's pretty much, I can, you know, you know my SSH connection can die. Better all off the node. change the polling interval for like a minute. So anyway, uh, as soon as it goes down, we get an alarm. There's a bunch of alarms in this queue that I've been publishing to. And you can change the format of the message. Um, you can actually also send it as an object message. And you can get the actual ONMS alarm object. Um, but most likely, you'll want to do a, a text, um, you know, text message with the format. So. It's configured in um, Etsy, uh, JMS Northbound configuration. Um, default, it's um, turned off um, to change enable to true. Uh, you can mess with the uh, um, you know, message sending batching um, sizes if you want to, although it's unlikely to be necessary. <coughs> um, and this is where you find the message format in here. So. Um, reasonable people would probably convert this to a C data field so that you can do whatever you want without worrying about XML escaping. But um, and then you can send it to multiple destinations as well. So by default, it'll send it. It'll actually spawn a um, you know a, um, anyway. It'll spawn a, a broker, um, a local broker, and just deliver it to inside to the VM um, uh, that broker VM and JVM. Um, but you uh, change it to an external broker, which is what I'm doing here. You just you know, uh, open that open and mess that property. Just change the this property here um, to whatever broker um, URL you want. Uh, specific to that to the anyway. Um, so then you wouldn't have to um, rely on a broker being bundled with open MS. Just, I mean, if anyone's I've ever, I know that, um, Desi, were you trying to, or you added the ActiveMQ to, uh, oh, there it is. Was it you or was it Seth that I I was trying to work on adding ActiveMQ. Yeah. Um, the plan is we'll, we'll have a, Broker running on six one six one six local host. Sure. Uh, so you know, as soon as I get all those spring dependencies resolved, sure. and I've I've done that by hand before, and it works great until after then he blows up the JVM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, so that's the that's like the trade off. It's like it's convenient, but maybe you want to isolate the two. Mm -hmm. But yeah. anyway, um, so that's about it. From so the event you're sending is it on a long change or is it? So, so I got an outage. It doesn't have to be an outage, but any any event that has alarm data tag uh, in the event definition is an alarm. And typically, you've got alarm type one is a raise condition, uh, two is a clear condition, and three is a single state meaning that it, it's bad so it can't fix itself. It's driven by events. You yes. On, on events. Yeah. Any event. Changing event will 
Yes, any event that has alarm, that has the alarm element added to it, alarm data element added to it, will we'll get forwarded to, to this, this offender, to this queue. Um, so, and that, another one was added when I. Um, so, there's, so, does that mean that if you go to repeat event? So, you can control that in here. Um, in, the, in the configuration, you can do first occurrence only to true, which is what I have here, so that. Keep getting the same alarm all the normal and only send the first one. Um, which is another motivation for doing it this way rather than using the OFD or some other way to do it. You can use the already built in functionality of um, producing alarms. Uh, or, you know, go to one thing with a count instead of keep sending. Where, where do you latch that information by being the first one? It's just part of the alarm. The Thing. I, I'm not sure I didn't write that part of the code, but um, it's just a built in. I mean, if you look at this on here, if you launch for this node, it um, has this count variable. And so for a node losing a service, that's not a very good It's only told me I've really going to be one because it'll when you get the clear, it'll start creating a new one. But say you got like a syslog message, you're not going to be it's an alarm. If you get that same trap, you know, 15 times, it'll just, this count will go up to 15, and that's just part of. Um, so, so if the count is one, you send the message to the count Exactly. Yeah. Um, the uh, send as object message, that's how you could, um, if, you, if you set that to true, it'll ignore the message format and just send it as an object. Case of that would be. Um, uh, if you wanted to replace um, the JMS implementation, um, basically what I'm using is the Spring uh, JMS template caching connection factory. And then um, there's a property that takes a property called target connection factory, and I have it refer it's referencing. Active MQ connection factory by default, but if you wanted to change, you can. You know, there's a property you can replace in the OpenMS properties file. Um, as long as you have that being somewhere in the Spring hierarchy, um, then you could uh, replace the connection factory implementation. So um, there's other properties you can see here too. If, if you're whatever Active MQ broker you're. Hitting as requires password authentication, you can specify that in the property style as well. So, yeah, that's about it. Any questions?